All right, our next question over here. Um, well, most players, when a new MMO comes out, they compare it to World of Warcraft. As producers, do you try to compare it to World of Warcraft, or just ignore that completely? What's World of Warcraft again? <laughs> <laughs> Life sucks. Um, for us, I mean, World of Warcraft isn't a very good analogy. Um, we look at it for maybe social systems, things like that. What did these guys do well? But I mean, you look at pretty much any game for that. Um, I haven't been in one of those. How can we make this more like WoW conversations in years and years and years now? No, I, I agree. I don't think you look at it from a, a point of view of how can we do something differently from them just to be different or like them to try and get more customers. You're, you're looking at it for a case of how can we make the game that we are making as best as we can? And how can we make it a great game? I think if you start second guessing yourself and saying, you know, well, we want to do this to, to, you know, to kind of distance ourselves from World of Warcraft or to be closer to World of Warcraft, you start doing your, your own design intuition a disservice. So you really want to be kind of honest to your game and look at, and you might take some things from a game like that. It's a huge game and it's been immensely popular with millions of people. They do a lot of things, right? Yeah. You know, so you, you are going to draw from it a little, but you're not trying to use it as a yardstick by which you're going to judge your own design necessarily. Yeah, I think in, in general you can kind of out design yourself if you, you, you kind of go down that path. I think that around like, you know, maybe 2006, 2007, you saw a lot of MMOs just trying to be different just to be different, and there wasn't a lot of a, a lot of good reasons or designs behind it. And so I think that you just need to be careful and, you know, set out to make the game that, you know, you think you and your players and your fans will love. And, you know, sure, you can learn things from everybody. You know, everyone here, you know, we see every video, every feature they do, and we look at it and say, oh, that's cool, or that sucks, and, you know, or what are they doing there? And so you, you learn from everybody in the whole industry, but I, I think you can definitely outdesign yourself on those sort of things. Yeah, as far as actually comparing, as you said, I think the reason why they compare is because it's far and away the most polished MMO that's been released. Uh, far and away, it's not even really close. A lot of their MMOs are very, get, get, tend to be really rough around the edges, and especially for, what is it, seven or eight years old now. At that time, nothing was even close to as polished and as easy to like, get into. So that's why it attracted a lot of people, well, at least one reason why, and it's the reason why people look towards it as, you know, what they want to do. Well, I think for all the people who were involved in EverQuest, they probably get annoyed when, you know, it's being compared against World of War, the game they're being <laughs> compared against World of Warcraft, because World of Warcraft really grew from EverQuest. That's kind of the granddaddy of that style of game. I think um, it's a genre, and whenever you're working within a genre, so MMORPGs is a genre just like RTS is a genre, just like sports games is a genre, you have to look at your competition within that genre and learn from them. Because if you're reinventing the wheel with every game system that you're working on, you're going to fail. You've seen lots of projects that do that. So, yeah, you're going to look at um, the genre and games within there and uh, make sure you learn what you can, but then you have to innovate as well. You have to have your own take. You have to differentiate yourself in some way. Uh, yeah, for us, I mean, our game's all about action and shooting stuff in the face. So besides, <laughs> besides community stuff, uh, not as much. It's actually kind of funny. We WoW's gone through three iterations in, at 38 Studios. Um, the first one was uh, how, what did they do that was just so awesome that we want to make sure we do as well as they do, if not better. The second one was uh, when we look at what we're making and, and we're trying to tell ourselves that it's getting fun, but at lunch everybody's still logging into WoW instead of the game they're making. Um, and the. Uh, the third one is, is the question, the burning question we ask ourselves now, which is when we launch, why will people that have six, seven, eight years invested in the World of Warcraft account leave that game and come play ours? And, and those are, that's, that's the question that we put to ourselves pretty much every time we get together and talk about where, where Copernicus is. Awesome. Excellent answer. Next question over here, please. Um, this question was going to be primarily for Kurt, but since all of you were kind of mentioned it, uh, I think anybody could really answer it. I'm a long-time EverQuest player. I saw sites like Alakazam grow up. Even when Swoder came out recently, it has um, you know databases half full of all the things you can do. How do you and how do your companies look at that challenge of it's really hard to design content that players are going to be challenged with mentally because there's always that temptation to log out and look it up. How do you design how they progress, how they level, and what time it should take? knowing that they're going to be creating these kind of repositories of information? Well, first off, I mean, 
I think we would all say that, that those repositories, we want those to grow and continue and always be there. That's, that's the gamers, that's the communities that, that in, are going to invest massive amounts of time because you've created something they care about. I, I, I can't think of any scenario when I don't ever want those to be around. Having said that, I think what we're seeing now is the, is the growth of the MMO space across all platforms. Uh, you know, one of, the, one of the objectives five and a half years ago when I founded 30 Studios was that I don't want you to have to be sitting in front of a PC to interact with this, this intellectual property. That doesn't mean we're going to make an, uh, an MMO on the iPhone, but there's no reason that those, any platform in the world can't be tied into the entertainment experience that we're creating, whether it be through you know, Todd McFarlane and R.A. Salvatore Digital Stories, or Todd McFarlane Toys, or, or anything from a platform perspective. The platform that you're holding in your hands or sitting in front of has to, I think you have to build to the platform strengths. And, and w the community tends to drive and decide what they want, how they want that information. You know, I mean, you're talking about Alakazam, I'm sure we've all uh, participated in or been around, you know, uh, after EverQuest, every MMO came with, with exclamation points and question marks, and, and it, you know, the barrier entry has gotten, gotten easier, which I don't think is something everybody loves, but at the same time, we want you guys to, to continue to grow those things and build those things, because that's, you, you're the lifeblood of what we do, and that's the way that you show us that we're doing things right and doing things wrong. Yeah, that, that is great. Like we're actually giving away to anybody that wants to make a fan site. We'll give them all our item names and all the drops or whatever they want, right? Like that grows the community. There's whole people that just focus just on that kind of stuff, and it's awesome. I think as far as like designing for it, I think you need to put more of the skill back in the player's hand and make sure that you know they're not just following a step one, step two, step three repeat. You need to put some sort of player skill. And I think there's a lot of games up here that are starting to lean a lot more towards you know, how the players handle the combat in the game or handle the different skill challenges in the game, not just you know stand here, hit this three times and repeat. Or, and use variation for that. I mean, a lot of the design we're doing now, and I think there's a lot of great uh, gameplay design moving into the kind of the MMO space in terms of the encounters and the instances and the raids and the stuff that we do at the high end of the game or even all the way through some of the games. That's come a long way in the last five years. and. I think what we're able to do now is we get better at what we're doing. We're maturing as an industry. And I think if you compare any of those kind of experiences that a lot of us had back in EverQuest in the day, you know, to some of the stuff that World of Warcraft does now, the guy in Guild Wars 2s are doing, you know, in our own games, and any of those MMOs, it's a lot more complex now. And even if there's a guide, you can put enough variety in the gameplay experience and enough reliance on the player's skill and ability and reactionary uh, kind of responses that you can still make it interesting for the player and make the experience fun, even if they have read a walkthrough of your dungeon. And this is actually not a problem uh, just within online games anyways, it's a problem with all games. If you think about it, there's hint and cheat guides for console games just as much as there are for PC games. And really, I think, um, as a game designer, what you're trying to do, whenever you're designing um, a game, you're trying to hit this balance where your game isn't too frustrating and it's not too easy. If it's too easy, players get bored. If it's too frustrating, then people go to the hint guide and they just get the cheats, and then they, that kind of breaks their immersion. You don't want that. So it's really trying to hit that happy medium, which you're trying to do with any kind of game, not just MMOR or Yeah, I don't know if they really go to the hint guide if, if for that reason so much as just to look it up. The thing is, it doesn't really matter if you look it up or if you don't. There are actually just a lot of people who don't even know about that stuff, all the wikis and all that. Really what matters is, I, I don't need to look it up to know whether or not it's fun, right? Like, that the wiki doesn't tell me that, and if the game is fun, then it doesn't matter whether or not they know exactly what they're supposed to do. When they do that, they're having fun. I use those kind of hint guides all the time for something like League of Legends. I want to see a cool build for that kind of game, you know. And that's a, you know, that's something that should be there. That people should be able to share those builds. They should be able to say, hey, here's the way that I played this thing. And that's, I think, what you said. It's all about variation. If there's a lot of different ways that you can tackle a problem, a lot of different ways for you to solve how you capture the space or how you complete this raid, um, being able to share people's different strategies for that, I think, is great. All right. Cool. Next question, please.